Kuwait. 2001. A desert airbase, just 23 miles from the border with Iraq. Heading for war, a squadron of Royal Air Force tornadoes. The tornadoes are enforcing a no-fly zone, suppressing the military might of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. It's a baptism by fire for pilot Mandy Hickson. We were on a reconnaissance trip. We were simply joining the dots on our route. My navigator is in the back seat. And just as he looks to the right, he spots a surface wave missile launching at us. I hear, Mandy, break right. And I instantly carry out the maneuver, rolling to 120 degrees. This is a maneuver I practiced hundreds of times before, but if I get this wrong at this moment, I would not be here to tell the tale. Hickson twists and turns the tornado, but the missile tracks the heat from the full power engines. I pull hard towards the ground, and my navigator is going to put out flares that are going to act as a countermeasure. Flares mimic engine heat to distract missiles but this one keeps coming. Hickson thinks fast and reaches for the throttle. We chilled our engines, which means basically reducing the power to create a cooler target than the flares. The tornado slows and the engine heat drops. And that's when the missile turned from being locked on to us to exploding on the flares. The tornado beats the Iraqi attack. And not a moment too soon. We had exactly enough fuel to return back to base, but not an ounce more. Her wingman takes out the missile battery. Hickson and her squadron return to their desert base. We were the only formation who was successful that night. The maneuverability is testament to the tornado's capability. It certainly is going to be going down in history as one of the most remarkable aircraft that the Royal Air Force has ever seen.